Hi there, everyone. A hearty welcome to all of you who have joined us for another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Inside the pages today, see how diabetics can manage their health. Plus, opportunities from the sea as we highlight Jamaica's maritime and air transport sectors. It's information you don't want to miss. So stick around for these and more after this important message. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four hours of water conservation today. Thanks for staying. While we take time throughout this Lenten season to reflect on our spiritual well-being, we also want you to pay attention to your physical health. So on these opening pages of our HealthWise segment, we will help you understand how to take care of yourself if you are diabetic. Diabetes is a serious chronic lifestyle disease affecting millions of people over the world and, con and continues to increase. Diabetes affects how your body turns food into energy. It is a disease in which your blood glucose or blood sugar levels are too high and glucose comes from the food you eat. Insulin is a hormone that helps the glucose get into your cells to give energy. Sometimes your body doesn't make enough or any at all doesn't make any insulin and so the, it doesn't use the insulin well. Glucose then stays in your blood and doesn't reach your cells. Over time, having too much glucose in your blood can cause complications example, situations with the kidney, heart disease, and so on. Although diabetes has no cure, there are steps you can take to manage your diabetes and stay healthy. It is through lifestyle that we manage the risk of, 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 of diabetes. Those behaviors include increased physical activity, a healthy diet, routine health checks, and strict adherence to medication. The Ministry will be championing the cause of persons living with diabetes. We have updated our clinical management guidelines, which is now available on our website, and we will be working on increasing access to testing through the introduction of point-of-care testing. This methodology of testing is the gold standard for monitoring and control of diabetes. Our agency, the National Health Fund, will continue to support persons through the provision of diabetic medication and supplies. And I encourage persons with diabetes to enroll in, this, in, in the NHF card program to access this, this benefit. Persons with diabetes should really have a, an opportunity to sit down with a trained clinician who has been is, is able to help them to understand the concepts of diabetes self-management education and support. There are four core areas the patient must begin to understand. How and when to take medication. That's the first one. If you take insulin, then you need to know how does your insulin work and how do you eat in relation to the insulin. Then there are the people who have type 2 diabetes, which commonly start off with education on activity and just healthy nutrition. And then we add one of five classes of oral agents 
And then we teach them how to make food, how to eat food. Also, we think of things like target blood pressure. Is your weight healthy or do you need to lose a little weight? And most importantly, how do you feel? What is your quality of life? All of this is what we focus on. Also, when you get your lab work done, what is your hemoglobin A1C? The target should be 7% or less. Keep that number in your mind. Diabetes damages the feet, the kidney, and the eyes at first, and then eventually we also find it can cause coronary vascular disease too. But for foot care, the person with diabetes every day, you wash your feet, wash them properly. Dry your feet, dry between the toes. Moisturize your feet, but do not put moisturizer between the toes. Make sure that you wear cotton socks, right? If you're going to have your toes cut, cut by somebody trained who knows how to cut them. Examine your feet every day. Do not wear, walk barefoot. Please, please, please do not walk barefooted because if you injure or cause trauma to the feet, you may not feel it because your diabetes has damaged the nerves to the feet. And finally, when you buy shoes, buy shoes that are comfortable and that you can wear without causing blisters or trauma to the feet. Now we have research that shows that I can prevent the eye damage, the, the kidney damage, the foot damage, and the um, amputations by just keeping my blood glucose is under control and taking care of myself. There's no such thing as a diabetic diet, but it's all about how much I eat, the timing of my meals. So it's your portion sizes is what is important. Now, the, what we do recommend is that persons eat at least three balanced meals per day and small snacks. Snacks usually mean smaller, more nourishing meals, which we usually recommend that it be your fruits, your vegetables, or you can also use your nuts. Each meal or snack should contain protein because we need it to be balanced as well. Each meal should contain at least your protein and your fat. And we also want them to select a variety of foods from all the food groups. So there is some recommendations about the amount of fruits that you should eat per day. We usually say two to three servings. We want you to include a variety of vegetables daily. We also want you to include more peas, beans, and nuts in your daily meals. Reduce your intake of salty and processed foods and to reduce your intake of fats and oils and that of sugary foods and drinks. You aim for foods that have high sources of fiber, such as your whole wheat bread, whole grain rice, flour, more of your ground provisions. They will give you fiber, right? And that will slow down the rate at which your body breaks down the food. So you won't have a rapid increase in your blood sugar levels versus if you eat foods that are low in these added fibers. When you're having alcohol as a person living with diabetes is not to have it on an empty stomach because you know it gives the risk of lowering your blood sugar and also what we want you to do is that once you have diabetes we do not really recommend the mixed drinks so as to say because they usually have a sweetened base for women it's usually you can have a drink per day and for men is no more than two drink and what is a drink Usually for beer, it's not more than 12 ounces. And for like a shot, it's usually a shot, which is about one and a half ounces. And for wine, recommendation is usually about five ounces thereabout. There are several researches that have shown that physical activity, when done properly, for persons who are diabetic, again, you heard it, allows you to use up glucose for children, the recommendation is at least 60 minutes, five days a week of moderate to vigorous activity, and it must be a combination of muscle and bone strengthening activity. That's the recommendation for our children. For adults, it's at least 30 minutes, five days a week to get some health benefit, meaning increased circulation, reduce stress. And for the elderly, it's at least 30 minutes, five days a week. If you are a diabetic patient, these are some of the activities that are very good for you. Swimming, jogging, dancing, these activities, they're not very vigorous. You know, you maintain them at a low to moderate pace, and it's, it's a very effective way of managing and controlling your blood glucose or your blood sugar. If you 
are going to start a physical activity program that you check with your doctor before you start because if you have a condition, if you're diabetic, hypertensive, you have any other medical condition, your doctor will determine the intensity level, the type of activities that you can do. Persons living with diabetes mellitus have multiple psychosocial issues related to diabetes management and its complications even before COVID. And there's an entity called diabetic distress, which refers to the negative emotions, such as feeling hopeless, angry, or frustrated that persons who are dying with diabetes experience, especially if they lack social support. I must mention we have the mental health helpline, which is 888 639-5433 or simply remember 888-NEW-LIFE which is a 24-hour, 7-day week, 7 days per week psychological support produced by psychologists. When you call this number, they can provide emotional support for you. If you are feeling any form of emotional distress, they can provide support for you and where you need additional help, they will direct you to additional help. On this next journey inside the pages of Jamaica Magazine, we're taking you to Kingston's gateway to Jamaica and the world. We're making time for an in-depth look at the Norman Manley International Airport services and offerings. Welcome to the Norman Manley International Airport, your gateway to the Caribbean and the Americas. It's Jamaica's principal business and visiting friends and relatives access point, providing a wide range of services and amenities to meet the needs of the most discerning traveler. The Norman Manley International Airport provides a distinctly Jamaican experience and is a first-class facility characterized by efficiency. Through the departures experience, travelers have access to the fully automated Park and Fly Extended Parking Facility. The Red Cap Porter Service, which provides courteous luggage assistance from the curb to the ticketing counter. Spacious, inviting, and modern, the ticketing hall provides services from 13 airlines, and for convenience, the automated self-service easy check-in reduces wait time. Savor your last moments in Capital Kingston by relaxing with family and friends or with a memorabilia from the photo station. Choice, convenience, comfort. The Departures Lounge provides an all-inclusive package reflecting Destination Jamaica. Through the variety of savory and spicy meals, speciality duty-free shops and the airport art displays, a positive passenger experience is created. Club Kingston provides a secluded relaxation space for both leisure and business. The lounge affords a cultural experience reflecting Jamaican hospitality and luxury. Similar services can be accessed through the Club Kingston VIP Arrivals Lounge. Local and international travelers have the opportunity to acquire, select, high quality goods at exceptional prices through expanded duty-free shopping to either grab that memorabilia that defines a milestone or a gift for that special someone. The Passenger Pier provides access to immigration and customs services available 24 hours daily. For convenience, a customer service post is on-site and automated check-in options. To guarantee minimal delays in the customs procedure, three processing options are provided. Nothing to declare, items to declare, and passengers for special consideration, including children, the disabled, and elderly. Travelers can access support services through the hospitality desks located in the transportation hall. 
ground transportation, car rental, tour operators and hotel accommodations can be arranged through this multi-purpose facility. The arrivals forecourt provides an aesthetically pleasing environment with covered seating, a food court and bar. It is here that passengers are greeted with a true island experience, a very cool jelly coconut from the Jelly Man. Located on a picturesque peninsula and bordered by the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, the Norman Manley International Airport continues to provide modern air travel conveniences with 14 aircraft gates which can accommodate the Boeing 747-400, two remote stands, and multi-level departures concourse. Based on its strategic location, Norman Manley International Airport is capitalizing on air freight services through its state-of-the-art cargo and logistics center. This allows the airport to contribute to Jamaica's increasing role in the global air cargo trade. Safety and security is priority for the Norman Manley International Airport. The advanced security system for passenger and luggage screening is part of the layered approach adopted to ensure passengers are safely transported to and from their destinations. Effective, safe and reliable general aviation services are also key to enhancing the traveler's experience and expectations. From arrival to departure, a high level of management systems and processes ensure that the general aviation services provided are equivalent to worldwide standards. For over 70 years, with over 130 international flights per week, the Norman Manley International Airport remains committed to providing travelers with an exceptional Jamaican experience through its world-class transportation hub. One capital, two coasts, one connection. The Norman Manley International Airport is your Kingston gateway to the world. Jamaica, I can help you protect our citizens. Jamaica Eye will play a part in increasing your public safety. Jamaica Eye is part of an island-wide network of camera surveillance systems designed to increase the safety of you, our citizens. If you have a camera system outside your home or office facing a public space, log on to jamaicaeye.gov.jm today. Jamaica Eye, we're all connected. The Ministry of National Security, creating a safer and prosperous Jamaica. From the air to the sea, we're navigating now to another port of call, exploring Jamaica's development as a maritime state. Learn about the opportunities for jobs and wealth creation next. The seas call them home, home, where the northeast trade winds dance through the sounds of reggae, where the cockpit country shadows the world's fastest man, the vanguard of the Caribbean. The seas call them home, home to Jamaica. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and the largest English-speaking island state, with the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, essential for a robust shipping industry. Jamaica also has the second largest transshipment hub in the Caribbean. These developments are driven by a commitment to honor the international maritime conventions that Jamaica has signed establishing a maturing partnership with the International Maritime Organization, IMO. This 40-year partnership brings consistent advocacy for the maritime interests of Jamaica, the Caribbean and small island developing states and the least developed countries. The seas carry them on, shaping an expansive and progressive maritime vision fueling a structure and infrastructure of container, crews and bulk cargo ports, maritime administration and ship registration, maritime education and training. 
This vision led to the expansion and upgrading of port facilities island-wide to capitalize on additional trade and larger ships accessing services through the newly expanded Panama Canal. The expansion positions Kingston as one of the region's major ports. The Port of Kingston is also equipped to offer a range of maritime logistical services. For example, operating as the regional hub for vehicles delivered to 23 destinations in Central America and the Caribbean. Through German Ship Repair Services Jamaica, the island also offers wet dock repair services and plans full ship repairs with a floating dry dock. Jamaica's commitment to a greener maritime environment guides its fuel diversification with the use of clean fuels including natural gas. The prevention of maritime pollution is also integral in policy initiatives. As part of this thrust, Jamaica is now acceded to the Ballast Water Management Convention 2004 and is also the lead partnering country in the IMO's Global Ballast Partnerships Program. Bunkering is another key element of Jamaica's position as a major shipping center. We supply bunkers not only for vessels calling at Jamaican ports, including cruise ships, but also for those transiting across the wider Caribbean. Falmouth, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, Port Antonio and Kingston, five cruise shipping ports, with the Falmouth Pier being purpose-built for the largest cruise ships in the world. These major cruise ports offer a full range of cruise passenger facilities and services. Awarded the world's leading cruise destination, Jamaica's unique attractions, diverse tourism and numerous recreational and cultural activities are equal sources of attraction for the creme de la creme of the seas, Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship and other major cruise lines. The seas sends them out. Seafarers and shipping staff trained in Jamaica for international service are key to Jamaica's success as a maritime state. The Caribbean Maritime University, CMU, is the sole IMO-recognized maritime training institution in the English-speaking Caribbean for the training of officers. The CMU is now poised to satisfy the region's demands in the expanding maritime and logistics sectors with the opening of five satellite campuses. Through partnership with the Technical Cooperation Division of the IMO, Jamaica helps countries in the region meet their obligations under the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. Jamaica has also chaired for 10 years at the IMO, the organ responsible for the international rules for standards of training for seafarers. Jamaica is committed to reducing substandard shipping in the Caribbean. To meet this objective, the island has hosted the Secretariat of the Caribbean Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, CMOU, since 2004. In addition, Jamaica is host to the International Seabed Authority. 25 states now have permanent missions to support the regulation and control of all mineral-related activities of the authority. Partnering with the IMO Program of Integration for Women in the Maritime Sector, Jamaica has helped to mobilize maritime women in the region and strengthened their contribution to the safety, security and environmental protection of the maritime industry. Jamaica has also hosted the inaugural Regional Women in Maritime Association WEMAC conference. Its executive is led by a cohort of strong female leaders, including its first president, a Jamaican. The seas carry them through Jamaica's long-standing advantages, highly developed shipping expertise, and a skilled and educated workforce has seen our maritime sector blossom into an invaluable resource for the Caribbean and the region. A maritime state, a maritime home, bridging the IMO with the Caribbean and the Americas. Let's get together and feel all right. As we draw near the close of today's magazine journey, we take note of the magnificence of nature blooming around the Easter season. One of the eye-catching splendors is the poetry in full bloom. Take a look. 
They may bloom white, pink and most definitely yellow flowers. They can be seen from near and far. Bees love them, birds adore them, and humans can't get enough of them. They need no introduction. After all, they're picture perfect. That's the poi. Jamaica is known as the land of wood and water. Its beauty is world renowned. Adding to that notoriety is the poi plant. Poi or tabebuya, as it is called, is a tropical plant that's native to the Caribbean, South and Central America. It's also known as tree of old or trumpet tree for its showy inflorescence. Poi come in three brilliant shades, white, pink, and yellow. The white poi is a rare find. The pink variant is the national flower of El Salvador and Paraguay, while the yellow poi is a Jamaican favorite. This broad-leaved perennial plant is a popular forest tree on the island. Trees can grow up to 150 feet tall, with a trunk averaging a foot in width. The yellow poi is the shortest of the family, followed by the pink strain with the white poi reaching the highest heights. The poi can be pruned to a desired height, so don't be surprised if you see some short trees around. In the rainy season, the tree is usually evergreen and unassuming. By the dry season, its deciduous nature appears. But that's when the magic happens. The leaves give away the bright bursts of yellow, pink and white clusters of flowers that blanket the tree and later carpet the ground. The large tubular-shaped corolla forms a collection of blossoms which group together to strike a fashionable pose. As blossoms catch below, new fruit and foliage develop. The fruits of the poi tree are long slender capsules which split at maturity, exposing their winged seeds, perfect for dispersal. Though planted mostly as a brilliant showpiece, the poi may be used as a timber tree. Its durability, density, resistance to termites and general decay make it a hardy wood in the building and construction industry. Certain species of poi are also grown as honey plants by beekeepers. The tree also serves another purpose, a study reminder for students at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. Legend has it that if students have not begun to study for final exams by the time the poi blooms, then they are sure to fail. The next time you venture outside, be sure to be on the lookout for the poi and feast your eyes on one of nature's most conspicuous beauties. Or better yet, contact the forestry department to get a hold of your very own poi plant. It only takes two to three years to give you a spectacular flower display. And this is where we end the program, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, there is more to watch by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Until next time, happy Easter, take care, and live good. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.